Fall is here and it's officially the season of all the big name game releases, but I wanted to take the time and inform you of a PS3 exclusive that may have slipped through the cracks. Back in February of 2010, I reviewed Level 5's White Knight Chronicles, and as I stated then, it ended on a pretty significant cliffhanger. Released on September 13th, White Knight Chronicles 2 picks up right where the first title ended, with a series of improvements that are to combat some of the grievances that players had with the first game. Now, being a fan of the original, I was quite excited to see how this hardcore RPG was going to play out. A year ago, Grizel claimed the Ark of the Sun King from the Dogma Rift. And now he and his army have proclaimed themselves the second coming of Ishrenia, declaring war against all the kingdoms and nations of the world. At the same time, Sarvain, our Chancellor, has disappeared, defected. The first thing that needs to be pointed out is that this is not a sequel to the first game, this is the second half of the story. Luckily, the first game is included in this package, so if you're new to the series, you can and absolutely should start from the very beginning. If you've not checked out my review for the original game, I'd recommend checking that out first, as most of the mechanics, such as leveling up, combat, and loadouts remain the same throughout. If you've played the original game, you can import your clear save file right into number 2 and continue with your levels, money, and gear. The import though is not a smooth transition as you are required to rebuild your characters by allocating their points into the skill trees and rebuilding your combos and custom loadouts. You also have to pull all of your gear out of item storage and manually equip all of your characters. It just seems to me that this should have been done automatically. White Knight 2 took me 40 hours to complete without doing any of the side quests. If you were to start from the very beginning of the first game and do all of the content including errands and quests, you're looking at around 150 to 200 hours. Seriously, there is just a ton to do. But despite the great length of the game, you really only get a few new zones as for the most part, you're simply backtracking through the zones you've played through in the first title. The story picks up one year following the events of White Knight, with Grizel now leading his powerful army to destroy the kingdoms of the world. Once again, you take on the role of Leonard as he and his companions try to prevent this from happening. Early in your adventure, you gain the ability to travel back in time to key events from the first game to gather information to aid you in your quest. While I found the ending to be a letdown, overall I found the story to be pretty interesting with some nice little twists that brought some smiles to my face. The difficulty of the game has been significantly increased and the boss battles are all pretty epic, especially the final one. A new Game Plus mode unlocks upon completing the second game. The monsters don't scale with you though and there's no additional loot, it merely lets you play through the story again with access to one new zone. You may also load your clear save file and access this new zone and clear up any remaining quests you may have missed out on. There were supposed to be a bunch of improvements to the game to address issues players had with the first title, but overall I didn't really notice them. The combat feels really slow as it's still a turn-based system set in a real-time world. You can move around the battlefield, but in the end you're always waiting on a timer before you can initiate an attack, and your position only matters to the few area of effect abilities in the game. There's a massive list of abilities and spells for your characters to learn, including several powerful new additions, but I had serious problems managing my mana to the point where I was essentially forced to use only the most boring attacks just so I'd have enough mana to use my fun moves when I really needed them. I would have preferred real-time button mashing combat with the ability to spam the cool moves the whole time. The developers have added over 150 errands to both White Knight 1 and 2, which will eventually lead you to some really powerful rewards and will help you level up your guild score, but overall I found them to be quite tedious and monotonous. Usually they involve traveling from town to town, relaying pointless messages to various townsfolk. They are very uninteresting, but if you want the rewards you've just got to endure them. Much of the combat revolves around utilizing the Incorruptus, or badass massive knights, to deal with the most powerful foes. White Knight 2 will grant you access to all of the knights in the game, as well as allow your custom avatar to gain their own customizable knight. To me, utilizing the knights was the most fun part of the game, and it usually meant that some hectic shit was going down and you were barely going to survive a fight. The online Georama, where you customize your own hometown, has returned, and a massive number of new quests have been added as well, now with support up to 6 players online. Again, all the coolest and most powerful gear comes from these quests, so if you want to max out your characters, you're going to spend some serious time here after you've completed the game. The pre-rendered cutscenes again look beautiful, and the art style as a whole is great, but the graphics still feel a bit dated. I experienced screen tearing throughout most of the game, but the frame rate always remained intact. The voice actors for the most part were enjoyable, and the soundtrack that accompanies your adventure was top notch. It may seem like I've been nagging a bit here and there. I think that White Knight Chronicles really had some potential to be great, 
It has an interesting story, tons of cool gear, abilities, and lots to do, but the turn-based mechanics bring it down a few pegs. Regardless, I enjoyed the entirety of the time I spent on both games, and I still recommend giving it a shot if you're into hardcore RPGs. You can't beat the price for up to 200 hours of content, including both games on a single disc. Check out the full write-up and screenshots over at ZeitgeistGameReview.com. Stay up to date by following me on Twitter and Facebook, and make sure to check out all of the other great gaming entertainment on the Game Station. Don't forget to subscribe and press the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching.